chapter 14 tonight. We're going to read the first of three verses, John 14, 3. If you read your Bible, which I believe you do, you will be very familiar uh, with what we are about to read. Uh, amen. But we want to go there tonight because God's word is good like that. Amen. Many times there's stuff there we just don't see, we don't recognize, and uh, God would help us. John 14, verse 1 to 3. The story goes of a scientist who once visited uh, the off office of a great Nobel uh, prize winning physicist. And when he got to the office of this physicist, he was surprised to find on the wall of this man's office, a, a rabbit's foot on the wall. And the scientist looked at his rabbit's foot and he laughed nervously. And he basically turned to his friends and surely you don't believe this rabbit's foot is going to bring you good luck, my friend. I mean, come on, you're a scientist. There's no way you believe in this. And uh, uh, the, the, the physicist began to laugh and said, I don't believe in all this uh, uh, rubbish, uh, 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 mumbo jumbo luck. Bring you good luck, whether you believe it or not. That a rabbit foot is able to bring you good luck, whether you believe it or not. I thought to myself, for something that's supposed to bring you good luck, how many people know he wasn't lucky for the rabbit? You know, today we're living in a day and age where people believe all sorts of things. People in the 2021 believe in aliens when there's absolutely zero evidence of it. People in 2021, some people still believe that Elvis is alive and so is Tupac Shakur. You know, Al Kelly believes that he can fly. I'm sure he really believes that. He wants to believe that now more than ever. He can fly out of prison. But today, I want to throw my, my, I want to throw my hat in the mix. And I want to make a statement tonight. And it's the title of my sermon. I want, I want to say this. I believe in heaven. And I hope as God's people will believe that in heaven as well. That it's not some pie in the sky fairy tale. Heaven is a real, literal place. And I want to preach a sermon I've called, I believe in heaven. And I'm praying by the end of this, you will too. Amen. Let's bow it. In verse nine, one to three. Amen. There we go. One. Okay. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse three. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Father, tonight we are grateful again that you would allow us to gather and to receive from you. I'm asking tonight, uh, God, I'm simply a delivery boy. God, I pray help me to deliver your message to your church. Uh, I pray for anyone who's lost. I pray for anyone who is backslidden more than anything. Father, I pray, let them, let them, let them turn from their madness. Let them turn from their, their foolishness. Let them turn from their rebellion and be saved while there is still breath in their body. I'm praying, Father, you will encourage your church, your people there that have put their faith and their hope in you, Lord of heaven. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And all God's people said, uh, amen. Amen and amen. I want to consider first of all tonight that heaven is real. Heaven is real. In our text, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's having a very strong conversation. It's one of those uh, 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 powerful uh, departure scriptures in the word of God, or those, you could say, sad farewells. And he's basically telling them, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to be gone. And in fact, in a few days, he's going amen, to be gone. He's going to be killed amen, on the cross. And he's telling them he's going to be separated from them. And as he's telling them this, I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. And I really believe tonight in their mind, in their thinking, as he's telling them this, we are going to be alone. One of the things that makes hell hell is that you're going to be alone. In hell, there is no God. 
In hell, there is no help. In hell, there is no hope. In hell, there are many ways in and there is absolutely no way out. In hell, there is no respite Amen. from the pain and the anguish that you are going to go through, God forbid, if you end up there. In fact, when you speak to people about hell, the very mention of this place, it begins to evoke emotions amen, of anger. It begins to make them uncomfortable. It begins to make many people nervous because tonight, Amen. Hell really is a real place. In fact, I began to think about this. It is amazing what some people tonight believe, not just about hell, but what they believe about heaven. You talk to people sometimes and they'll tell you statements. In fact, I spoke to a man the other day. He told me this. I've heard it so many places. I've heard it in South Africa. I've heard it here. I've heard it in the United States. He made the statement that, that heaven is here. Can I help you tonight, amen? Um, heaven, amen, there is no McDonald's, um, amen, there is no parks, and there is no Amazon. The same with hell as well. And many people, amen, have all these things in their mind that somehow, um, amen, this is where it's at. Uh, and I'm convinced tonight that um, if there was no hell um, and heaven was a free for all, in other words, everyone who died um, went into heaven, um, I'm convinced tonight, amen, if that was the case, um, atheists would not have a problem at all. I believe tonight, in fact, there will be no such thing as atheists because the reality tonight is this. People's problem is with God and their accountability with him. And that is why many times you hear people make statements like, I believe in heaven, but I don't believe in God. But here's the problem with that statement tonight, amen. Without God, there is no heaven. So you need to understand tonight, amen, there is a God in heaven. And because there is a God, there must be a heaven. Now, here's the thing. The truth is more people believe in heaven than hell. Have you realized that? That more people believe in heaven than hell. That there is a nice place that we all go when we die. That is why when you attend a funeral, it is not uncommon to hear it said that he or she is now where? In a better place. And the, belief, the reason people say that is we don't want to believe that they are lost. We don't want to believe that God forbid that they're in a place called hell. And I can go on and on tonight, but I want to make a statement that most people believe that heaven is real. So where is heaven tonight? Heaven, amen, is simply the dwelling place of God where every believer goes when they die. It is a place where the Bible tells us, amen, where people are from every tribe, every tongue, every nation will be gathered there. Amen. In other words, heaven is not limited to one group tonight. There is no prejudice in heaven. There is no class in heaven. Amen. There is no black and white or yellow and pink and blue in heaven tonight. Amen. Just people, all of God's people, without division and all together as one and as humanity we have tried and meant to accomplish this through money through education through policies through songs through human effort we have tried to bring about you can say this oneness but in heaven it is going to be a reality in heaven tonight it is going to be an undefiled reality and in our text the lord jesus is speaking very clearly about heaven and one of the things he mentions is the word mansion now, i want to ask a question tonight amen who has ever seen a mansion before okay let's make this take it even closer how many of you have been inside of a mansion before oh you don't know what you're missing then I've been in some mansions before. I've, I've had friends, amen, who you can say were rolling in it. I mean, you walk into the, this place, you wonder to yourself, is this possible? This is, this is phenomenal. And maybe tonight, amen, you've, you, I remember back in the day, there used to be this program called uh, uh, Cribs. Remember Cribs? And you, you're there, you're, you're coveting, you're drooling. Like, I, 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 oh, my, I wish this was my house. I would love. And listen to me. I want you to try and imagine the best house you saw in Cribs. Imagine the best mansion you saw in Cribs. Have you got it? It doesn't compare to the mansion in heaven. Not even close. Not, not, even, a, not even worth um, a man discussion. Um, and I can say tonight this very confidently because we're told in the first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 uh, that eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it entered the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Tonight, amen, um, when that text talks about amen, um, uh, 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 the, nor has it entered into the hearts of man, you can say nor has it entered into the imagination of man. In other words, that you cannot it is impossible uh, to imagine heaven. Making a statement tonight, it is impossible. 
Listen to me, any sermon tonight on heaven tonight, I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to disappoint you tonight. And I'll tell you why I'm going to disappoint you tonight, amen. Because listen, we don't want illustrations. We want visualization. We, do you have some pictures, pastor? Do you got, have you got some film on this place? Because listen, I want to see this place. I, 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 I need to know what I'm dealing with here. So why do I believe in heaven? Because I believe in heaven. I do not believe in reincarnation. I don't believe I come back as, as somebody else in somebody else's body with somebody else's memory. I don't believe I come back as a plant or as an animal hoping to reach the final state of Nirvana. No, I don't believe that tonight. Nor do I believe in annihilation. I don't believe you die and that's it. You cease to exist. I believe in heaven. I really do. Now, why do I believe in such a place tonight? Why do I believe in this place called heaven? I'm going to give you four reasons. Number one, I believe in heaven, and this is the most important. I believe in heaven because Jesus believed in heaven. This is my number one reason. Now, the reason I believe in heaven is because the Lord Jesus Christ believed in it. Every major religion in the world talks about an afterlife. And you may know this tonight. So maybe you're saying to yourself, if that's true, what makes different, what separates Jesus, what makes him different from everybody else? Well, I'm going to give you two reasons tonight. One of the major reasons tonight is this. Jesus is the only one who died and came back to tell the story. He's the only one, amen, who's actually been there and come back, amen, to declare his claims. You can say tonight, church, he has backed up his claims with his life. He said, I'm going to die, I'm going to be buried, and on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And that is exactly, amen, what took place tonight. So you can say you believe this, you can say you believe that tonight, you can believe whatever you want, but tonight, church, I'm telling you something, I'm riding with this guy. This is the one I put in my faith and my hope in tonight, amen. The one who died and the one who is rose again is like the picture of a fork in the road. You come to the fork in the road and one side there is a man who is dead and another side is a man who is alive. Who are you going to ask for directions? You know, every single founder of any world religion is dead but Christ. He's the one, amen, I'm going to look to him. He's the one I'm putting my faith in tonight, amen. You can talk about scientists. We'll say, well, the facts is this, or there is no evidence about that. Let me tell you something about scientists. Scientists are going to die as well. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 6 says this, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen, here it is, by over 500 brethren at once, whom the greater part remains to this present, but some have fallen asleep. Do you know what that text is saying tonight? That's facts. We are told, amen, that Christ rose, and we have 500 eyewitnesses that said they rose. And when Paul wrote this, years has passed by, and he says many people who saw Christ alive are still alive at that time. Some are dead, yes, but many are alive, and they can attest to you that Jesus rose. I remember I was working with a man called Don, and he says, well, you know what, they were all hallucinating. I says, Don, 500 people don't hallucinate by the same thing. The second reason is in our text. And he's talking about heaven. And he's talking about heaven with confidence. Do you know why? Because Christ was a native of heaven. He says, my father's house. He said in John chapter 3, verse 13, he says to Nicodemus, no one has been to heaven except one who came from there, even the son of man. And I'll say this to you tonight, church, no one knows a place like the native of that place. And if Jesus said tonight, heaven is real, I believe that Jesus is telling the truth. In fact, again, it was C.S. Lewis that made a statement that was very powerful tonight. He says, believing things on authority only means believing them because you have been told about them by someone you think trustworthy. 99% of the things you believe are believed on authority. He says, I believe there is such a place as New York. 
I could not prove it. Uh, I could not prove by abstract reasonings that there is such a place. I believe it because reliable people have told me so. The ordinary person believes in the solar system, atoms, and the circulation of the blood on the authority because the scientists say so. Every historical statement is believed on authority. None of us has seen the Norman conquest or the defeat of the Spanish Armada, but we believe them simply because people who did see them have left writings that tell us about them, in fact, in on authority. Can I make a statement tonight? I believe in heaven because of the authority of the word of God tonight. He has said so, and I believe it. Number two tonight, I believe in heaven because I believe in hell. I believe in heaven because I believe in hell. Tonight, if there's no hell, the devil, evil, and evil men have won. It means crime pays because in the end, there is no justice. It means people who we deem to have gotten away with it have gotten away with it. It means people like Hitler and rapists and murderers. And I can go on and on tonight. Listen to tonight, church. There has to be a hell. Otherwise, there is no justice in the universe. And that since I believe in justice, I have to also believe in heaven. Number three tonight, I believe in heaven because the world leaves me wanting. The world leaves me wanting. Tonight, the world is not enough. This world that you and I live in, it's simply not enough. I believe tonight one thing we all know, every single person in this building and outside of this building, they're honest to themselves, they know this, and we've all said this, there has to be more to life than this. We've all thought it. We've all, there's got to be more. This simply cannot be it. And the reality is there is more to life than this. It is called eternal life. And it is far much more than this. Listen, I am grateful. I don't want to get me wrong. I am grateful and I am thankful tonight for many things. I am grateful and I'm thankful for what God has done in my life. I'm grateful and thankful for my wife. I'm grateful and thankful for my children. I'm grateful and thankful for my health. Amen. There was a time that was not looking very good. I'm grateful and I'm thankful tonight for my calling that God has so fit to call me to be a preacher of the gospel. But I'm going to be honest tonight. I'm reminded every day that we live in a world that is broken and it is cursed by sin. And the reality is it wasn't so in the beginning. In fact, in the beginning, the Bible makes it clear that it was good. That whatever God created, he made the statement afterwards that it was good. We spoke about marriage this morning. And I want you to think about this tonight. A lot of what we face in marriage, and I'm thinking about the negative stuff. You know there's negative stuff in marriages. We saw this, all right, yeah? A lot of what we face in marriage that is negative, it is a result of sin. Could you imagine tonight, amen, what that marriage would be like devoid of sin? Could you imagine tonight, amen, if there was no sin in your marriage? Could you imagine, amen, the glory and the joy and the victory there would be in every couple if there was no, listen, if there was no sin in marriage, there would not be any abuse. There would not be, amen, any adultery. There would not be any perversion. I could go on and on. There'll be no bickering and no fighting. There'll be no selfishness. There'll be no attitudes. Amen, I could go on and on. If there was no sin, could you imagine tonight what your marriage would be like if there was no sin at all involved in it? Paul says something very powerful in Romans chapter 8, verse 22 to 23. He says these words, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, we also, who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Do you know what the scripture is saying? 
even the universe, even the world, say, it's saying there's more than this. It's got to be more than this. It is literally longing for the day of redemption of being set free from the curse of sin. That is why one day, listen, when we make heaven our home, we are going to be given new bodies. And in that new body, you will never be able to be tempted to be sin. Amen. You will never have any sickness. I can go on and on. That is why, amen, God is not just going to, has not just redeemed us from sin. He's going to redeem us from the effects of sin one day when we receive that new body. Listen, one day the world is going to be redeemed itself. There's going to be a new earth. It, the world earth is literally crying out for redemption. The universe is literally crying out for redemption. And God says, I'm going to give it a do-over and give it, make it a new one as well because it wants to be set free from the curse of sin. Imagine no death tonight. Imagine no sorrow. Imagine no suffering. Imagine no pain. Only the joy and the blessing of fellowship with God. So that if you could simply begin to imagine that, then you're closely getting close to what heaven will be like. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says this. If then you who are raised with Christ seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. And what Paul is saying tonight is we need to be reminded about some things. That every day tonight, church, we need to be reminded of this truth every day. Because there are times, if we are honest as even Christians, we begin to get our mind set upon the affection of this world. We start looking at this world from a viewpoint of what this world has to offer me. What can I get from this? And we begin to you say, cast all our lots at this world because we're looking at this world as all that it is. And Paul is saying, you need a reminder, child of God. You need a reminder, brethren, tonight. And that reminder is to cast your eyes upon the things that are above, where Christ is, and not upon the things of this earth. Because what this world has to offer tonight, we need to be reminded that it is cursed, it is decaying, it is falling apart, its end is death. And tonight, I believe in heaven because if this is as good as it gets, it is not good at all. Lastly, I believe in heaven because some of the best people who ever lived believed in heaven. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 to verse 10. It says, by faith, he, this is Abraham, dwelt in the land of promise as a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Now, why did he do this? We're told in verse 10, for he, Abraham, waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I don't know if you've noticed this tonight, but the things that men build tend to break. The things that men build tonight tend to collapse and corrode because they are subject to decay. But the thing that God builds tonight has an eternal foundation because its builder and its maker is God. And in the text we just read, Abraham, the father of our faith, he's not content with an earthly country. And the Bible lets us know he's looking for a heavenly city. And tonight, amen, he was not the only one. Because I believe so was the apostle Paul. So was Paul, uh, sorry, Jim and Elizabeth Elliot. So was Corey Tamboon. So was Billy Graham. So was Wayman and Nelda Mitchell. And I want to throw it in as well. So was Warren Wisby. Uh, so was, uh, amen even my grandmother tonight that they were looking for tonight focusing upon something that was powerful and much more in lasting than this world could ever give them it was Charles Spurgeon that said these words to come to thee is to come home from exile to come to the land out of the raging storm to come to the rest after long labor to come to the goal of my desires and the summit of of my wishes. And what he's simply saying tonight is heaven is a culmination of everything you and I are longing for tonight.
It's all there. I want to close by simply asking a question. We'll ask a few questions this morning. I think we'll stay in that vein very quickly. I believe in heaven. How many of you believe in heaven? Here's the question tonight. Are you going there? I'm going to be honest tonight. I don't know how I feel about surprises. You either like it or you don't. Okay. How many of you like surprises? Lift your hand up. Be honest. I like so you like you like lift your hand up. All right. How many of you don't like surprises? Lift your hand up. All right. See, you even like it or you don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I guess my thing is, what's the surprise? You know, <laughs> I, I really don't. I'm really thinking to myself, do I like surprises? Do I don't I like? I, I don't know. I really, you know, I just don't know. I, I, I've never, I've, I've never, you know, some people just get very clear. I, I like it. I don't like it. You know, I, I, I really don't know. I can't, uh, uh, be, you know, put my finger on it. But tonight I want to leave you with free surprises about heaven. In fact, it has been said tonight that there are three things that will surprise us in heaven. Number one tonight, what is going to surprise us in heaven is who is not there. The people you expect to be there who aren't there. You're going to look for people tonight and say, uh, where's so-and-so? Where's sister so-and-so? Where, where, where's, 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 where's my guy? What, what, what's he, what, where, where is he? They're not here. I was so sure. Sure. No, there's, no, 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 no. Surely. Surely. Check, check. Angel, check it. Check. Go, go for the list again. Guess list. Quick. Yeah. No. Right? No way. No way. You are going to be shocked at who's not there. Do you know what the next surprise is going to be? Who is there? <laughs> this is the people who are there that you don't expect to be there. That in heaven, it is going to be a case of you're going to see other people and you're going to say to them, what are you doing here? What, are they let, letting riffraffs into the kingdom of God now? Or <laughs> The truth is, we're all riffraffs, by the way. What are you doing here? So heaven tonight is going to be who is not there. It's going to be who is there. But you know what the biggest surprise about heaven? You know what it is? The fact that we are going to be there. The fact that you're going to be there. That you look, hey, hey. Hey, what are you doing here? And they will look and say, I was about to say something about you. What are you doing here? To me, that blows my mind. That I'm going to be in heaven one day. I'm going to be in a place that is going to be the uninterrupted presence of God. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. I'm going to be in the eternal city, the celestial city. I'm going to walk the streets of gold. I will never ever grow old, that I'll never die, that I'll never be sick, that I haven't never had nightmares, I'll never I mean, have a headaches that come and go, I'm never going to have back pains and, and migraines, and there'll be no HIV, and there'll be no cancer, and there'll be no AIDS, and there'll be no all this, none of those things. And I'm going to be in a place where God really is reigning supreme. And here's the truth tonight. Not everyone is going there. Revelation 21, 8 says this, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. That should make a lot of people nervous right there. Shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now think about that statement tonight. Think about all those categories of people. Let me give you some good news before we go. 
many people who have committed some of those things are going to be in heaven. Many people who have actually committed far worse are going to be in heaven. Do you know why tonight? Simply because they got saved. Their name is in the Lamb's book of life. They have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is how you get your name in God's book. Here are people that were, were a certain way one period of time, but they turned away from that way, but they didn't just turn away, they turned to Christ. They surrendered their life to Christ, they, they confessed their sins, they put their faith in him, and now their names are written in the book of life. Tonight, that really is the real issue. Is your name in God's book? Because not everyone is going there. And the only way you and I will be there tonight is we put our faith, not in Buddha, not in Allah, not in Krishna, not in one, one young man told me yesterday, myself, but in Jesus, the only one who lived and died, rose again and paid for your sins, Jesus. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight, amen. I believe in heaven more now than ever. The older I get, I believe in heaven. I believe that my last breath here will my first breath there. And I believe I'm going there one day. Very quickly, maybe you're here tonight, you're not right with God. Maybe tonight you're watching online and you're not right with God. And tonight, if you were to die in your sins, my friend, I'm sad to say heaven will not be your home. That there is a place called hell. And hell is simply for everyone who has rejected Jesus. Hell is for the man, for the woman who says, I don't need God. I don't want God. Well, if you don't need God and you don't want God, then you're not going to be in the place of God. Hell is simply God giving man what man wants. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. That place is called hell. And nobody wants to go there. We want to go to the other place. We want to go to heaven. Because we know it's a better place. It is a glorious place. And friend, tonight Jesus died so you could be in that place. You can be where he's at. He says that where I am, there you will be also. And there is no other way to heaven but by putting your faith in the Son of God. And maybe you're here tonight, maybe you're watching online, you're not right with God tonight. Are you going to heaven? Because you can do if you put your faith in Christ tonight. Quickly, the Spirit of God is in this place. You say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I want to give my life to Christ. I want to put my faith in Christ. I don't want to die one day and end up in a devil's hell. I want to die having a confidence that when I breathe my last hair, it will be my first in the presence of God. Tonight, God is speaking to you. If that's you, lift your hand up tonight. I want to pray with you. Unsaved, or maybe you're backsliding tonight. You're away from God. You need Jesus. Lift your hand up tonight. I want to pray with you. Slip it up and put it down tonight. I mean, make heaven your home. Don't die in your sins don't leave this world without christ jesus quickly anyone in this place just up and down we'll see that and we'll pray with you tonight maybe online tonight up and down we want you to we want you to, to to make heaven your home tonight slip your hand up and put it down amen 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 then i want to speak to god's people tonight in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 it simply says this do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if it's stopped there, we're all in trouble. If it's stopped there, we've all got no hope. But in verse 11, it says, and such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified, not in the name of of Buddha, not in the name of Krishna, not in the name of Abdul Yusuf, not in the name of your mother or your father, 
but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Church, let us never forget tonight, the only way we're making heaven our home is because of Jesus. Because such were some of us. But he showed mercy because we put our faith in him. Tonight, I want to encourage you that heaven is real. Look forward to heaven. Let it come out of your mouth. Let, it, let, 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 let your talk not always be about what's down here. Paul again warns us very, very carefully. And he says, you, you need a reminder. I need a reminder of this. He says, if you are raised with Christ, seek the things which are above. Why? Because that's where Christ is. Set your mind to the things above, not on the things on the earth. And I believe we begin to fall in depression and we begin to walk in defeat when we're constantly focusing upon the things of this earth upon money and career and relationships and fun and many of these things are not bad in themselves and a family and a dog and two cats and, and not bad and all about the earth but no talk of heaven no talk of eternity I believe in heaven and I believe and I hope you too as well Let's begin to pray tonight. Let's begin to speak to God. Amen. Let's begin to spend time with him. Amen. Your chair is an altar tonight. Amen. Maybe tonight you, make, you need to make a fresh commitment. We sang that song tonight. Amen. Uh, that I've made up my mind to go God's way. Goodbye world. Maybe you need to say, God, I've been, I've been, I've been looking at this world in, a, in, a, in an affectionate way. I've been, I've been casting longing eyes upon what this world has to offer me. And I thank you tonight, God. You've, you've awoken me again. You've, 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 you've focused me back online again. And that this world is passing away. This world is... It's perishing. This world is going to be wiped out one day. It is in a constant state of decay. It is not getting better. It is getting worse in every way, shape, or form. Don't allow technology to fool you tonight. This world is getting worse. Cast your eyes on what's above. Why? Because Christ is there. Make a fresh commitment. I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to be distracted by shiny things. I'm not going to be distracted by carnal things. I'm not going to be distracted by worldly things. They have their place, but they will never have the main place. That belongs to you, oh God. That belongs to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for his sacrifice. Thank God for the blood that was shed for the remissions of sin. Thank God that he showed us mercy. That while, amen, we didn't care about him, he cared about us. Thank God that once we cried out to him in repentance, he accepted us. That he didn't make us squirm and make, make us beg and make us suffer and hollow before he, he, he... No, 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 no. The moment we put our faith in him, he says, you're accepted in the beloved. 